Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video we'll talk about space maintainers as what is space maintainers and why space maintenance is essential when a tooth is lost from the oral cavity. So let's get started. Okay, so now talking about what is a space maintainer the space maintainer is a device something like this which you can see on your right hand side of the screen now why is space maintainer required now to tell you that you first have to know that each tooth in the oral cavity is exfoliated from the mouth at a particular given time not before not later than that for example if a primary molar uh, is exfoliated from the mouth at the age of about or for example 5 so it has to exfoliate at that age if it exfoliates before that age then there is a term which occurs that is called as mesial migration the tooth starts to tilt mesially I'll show you how that occurs now for example this is a tooth which is present and there another tooth that is present now this X represents the tooth that was exfoliated earlier than it was supposed to be. Okay, this is our alveolar bone. Now, when this tooth number green one is exfoliated before its respective time, then the this tooth starts to move mesially because there is no opposing force to it. So it starts to move mesially. It tilts mesially and when this occurs the tooth that is present below this green one the permanent one it doesn't get enough space to erupt in a proper position so then this leads to malalignment so in order to prevent this malalignment a space maintainer is required now what does a space maintainer do space maintainer basically creates this space or leaves this space as it is preventing the mesial migration of both tooth this one as well and this one as well and maintains this space so that this permanent tooth this blue one that is supposed to erupt in its position doesn't get malaligned it erupts in this position so that's why space maintainer is required so we've discussed what is a space maintainer and what is the purpose of a space maintainer now classifying space maintainer space maintainer can be either fixed or it can be removable for fixed we have band and loop lingual arch transpalatal arch distal shoe and for removable we have partial denture and distal shoe we will discuss each of them in in a short while okay so first we'll talk about band and loop space maintainer as you can see this is a band and loop space maintainer this red highlighted area is the band which is inserted onto the tooth and this brownish colored wire like structure is a loop which is used to maintain the space so now what is the function of this uh, band and loop space maintainer band and loop space maintainer is basically a unilateral space maintainer it maintains space only on one side okay it is not used on it is not used bilaterally and it is used in the posterior segment where molar are lost so for example so for example this is a permanent molar that is erupted but this deciduous second molar has been exfoliated prematurely or not on its uh, right time so when this occurs there is a tendency for this molar to move mesially and also the tendency for this to move in this direction so when this occurs there is not adequate space for this permanent tooth to erupt in this position and its correct alignment so to do that we use a band and loop where the band is inserted over here it's placed over here let me draw it for you like this the band is inserted over here and this loop is present like this so when this is present like this this 
it prevents the migration of this tooth in this direction and prevents the migration of this tooth in this direction so this space is maintained and this tooth then erupts into its proper alignment now placing this band is much more easier if it's placed on a permanent molar as compared to a primary molar because of the morphology of primary molar which converges occlusally therefore making the retention of the band difficult now one drawback of this band and loop is that its survival is not very impressive like it hardly lasts for 18 months maximum it doesn't last long and sometimes has to be replaced and one more thing it also doesn't sub substitute for the occlusal forces that the normal teeth does so the only function of this is to maintain space nothing else that was all about band and loop now moving on now many of you are aware of what is a partial denture partial denture is basically used when more than one tooth is uh, lost in the indentation and in this picture you can see that more than one tooth is lost in this posterior segment so when more than one tooth is lost and it's present bilaterally then we used partial denture so let's write that down the use of partial denture is loss of teeth bilaterally like for band and loop it was unilaterally but here it is bilaterally now one more advantage of partial denture is that it provides occlusal support as well for example in mastication which wasn't the case when we discussed band and loop so partial denture is used when in the posterior segment bilaterally more than one tooth is missing that's when you use partial denture now talking about distal shoe distal shoe has a unique application it is the application of choice when a primary second molar is lost before the eruption of permanent first molar like when the second primary molar is lost second primary molar is lost before I'm gonna write permanent perm molar erupts that's the main indication of distal shoe when primary molar sec uh, primary molar is lost particularly second primary molar is lost before the permanent first molar erupts now how is this uh, distal shoe space maintainer is used in this case a band is placed on the molar tooth which is the a primary first molar and this structure you can see with here it is a rod like structure it is inserted into the alveolar mucosa and uh, close to the marginal ridge of this molar first molar 1 mm below the marginal ridge of this molar and this acts as a guiding plane for this molar to erupt in its respective aligned position so that space can be maintained for this tooth to erupt so band is inserted on this first uh, deciduous molar and this rod like structure acts as a guiding plane for this primary uh, sorry permanent molar to erupt and this rod extends 1 mm 1 mm below the marginal ridge of permanent first molar so this is how this distal shoe guides the eruption of permanent first molar now there are certain contraindications where distal shoe shouldn't be used and these contraindications are as follows patients who are immunocompromised and patient at risk for subacute endocarditis in this patients these are the contraindications where distal shoe shouldn't be used because the alveolar mucosa is penetrated in them so there is a chance that infection might develop so we have to make a decision 
whether to use it or not. Now this next appliance is called as lingual arts. In this case you can see how the bands are inserted over these motors and a wire like structure is present lingually across the incisors. So the main use of this is when the primary molars or um, primary posterior teeth multiple are lost no primary posteriors and permanent incisors are erupted that's the main indication of lingual arch when when the primary posteriors more than one are lost and at the same time permanent incisors are erupted that's its main indication now the use of this lingual arch is that it prevents the mesial migration of these molars as well as it pre prevents the it prevents the lingual angulation of these incisors it makes the incisors in its position and also holds the molars in this position thereby maintaining the space that is required for the erupting permanent teeth and preventing malocclusion. Now one important thing when the permanent incisors haven't erupted and their uh, multiple posterior teeth are lost then you shouldn't use lingual arch because when the primary incisors are present and you use lingual arch the eruption of permanent incisor is uh, disrupted because they are placed lingually uh, as compared to the primary incisor so there is primary incisor and behind them the permanent incisors are present so when you place the lingual arch, or lingual arch in there their eruption pathway is disturbed so and at that condition we don't use lingual arch we only use lingual arch when the permanent incisors have erupted and multiple posterior primary teeth are lost so that's one thing second thing is that when you use this lingual arch the wire that is placed lingually should be at least 1 mm above the cingulum so let's let's suppose these are the teeth and these are the cingulum over here so when you place the wire the wire should be at least 1 mm above the cingulum that is a requirement for for this lingual arch system so this was all about lingual arch now moving on next next is the transpalatal arch in this picture you can see a, a model of a maxillary arch and here you can see the molars are banded and there is a wire passing between them this is known as transpalatal arch the function of transpalatal arch is basically for stabilizing the first maxillary permanent molars when primary molars require extraction so these basically maintain the position of these molars in their respective position so when we write so when we write down the use it's to maintain the position of the molars <clears throat> now the best indication for transpalatal arch is when one side of the arch is intact and several primary teeth on the other side of arch are missing so for example here this let's assume this side is stable and on this side we have several primary teeth missing so in this case this is the best indication for usage of transpalatal arch for a, ma a maxilla but one drawback in this situation is that even though this transpalatal arch maintains the position of this molar but still slight mesial migration does occur which is inevitable in this case okay so lastly talking about NAND suppliers as you can see here the molars are banded here and there's u-shaped area present at the ruga area of this maxilla so this is known as nans appliance now nans appliance is used 
when bilaterally primary molars have been lost but permanent molar might move mesially so in that case nance appliance is used so let's write that down no primary molars bilaterally and they also to some extent prevent the mesial migration of these molars now one disadvantage of this is that it can cause soft tissue irritation that's one drawback of it okay so that's all that was all about space maintainers we discussed removal and fixed space maintainer their uses their disadvantages their indications and in when conditions they shouldn't be used so this was all about space maintainers i hope this video was useful for you so if you liked it please like share and subscribe and see you guys next time thank you very much